We're going. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Everett Triplett again. I have uh, be, been become aware of more important information, which I um, do my best to try to do a video to explain to you the things that are coming together in my mind is very clear. We're watching the process moving forward called in prophecies the birth pains. They have begun, we're under contractions. But the most alarming uh, prophecy I see is the uh, Isaiah 33, where it says, Woe to the destroyer who's not been destroyed, which it says, When you stop destroying, you will be destroyed. Well, there's no other military power on the planet that has gone around doing as much destroying as the United States, which we know we're up against powerful enemies. We're only about 4% of the world's population. We're facing a lot of hostility and global turmoil. I understand what's coming. Our country's been set up to appear to the whole world to be the nation who's responsible for creating all the global chaos. When in fact, we're just trying to be free because freedom's not free. And many Americans have paid the price to remain free. But who's really opposing us is those who want to have a global government. And uh, just since the new year, I listen to the, I call him the president of the world because he's the secretary general of the United Nations, which is the global government. But Antonio Guterres in a two minute speech, which you should look up, I think it was on January 2nd. He says his message is simple and clear. Stop. Re exercise maximum restraint. He talks about the global trade imbalances and chaos and technological war. He's talking Everything he's talking about, he doesn't say it, but it's about the United States. He says we must renew international dialogue and agreements, and, and uh, which we're, we're actually being accused in a speech by Putin. If you follow me, and look up other information I've got. It tells you that uh, Russian leader Putin said global war is almost inevitable, but it can be avoided if the United States will just do one thing. Agree to the same terms as everyone else to be subject to the international laws. Now, the international law rules over the whole world. But these people that want to have a global government are mentioned in a speech by Trump when he was campaigning. He basically said his campaign is a true threat against those who are trying to control the levers of power in Washington and that they're, uh, they have a radical global agenda, that there's no limit to their financial resources. He's talking about the international bankers that own and control the Federal Reserve. And they're the ones responsible for our massive amount of debt this country is in. They've been working to try to destroy us. At any rate, they're being very effective. You know, the old saying, united we stand, divided we fall, is very true, but we've never been a nation so divided because they're planning for the fall of the United States of America. But back to uh, the assassination of the Qasem Soleimani. At his funeral, his daughter made a statement to all of the people there mourning his death. And in words in an attempt to console the people there, she said, America has a dark day coming. What I've already known from my research is that there's going to be, it's inevitable, it's imminent. This country, they're going to take down our power grid. That it's going to be lights out. It's just like a, an old cowpoke sitting on a barroom stool and on a, at the end of a long, hard day, somebody been laying for him, walks up behind him and goes, kaboom! and knocks him clear off the bar room. He's laying sprawled out on the bar room floor, knocked out. That's called having your lights punched out. That's their plan. They're coming to do it. It's inevitable. Once you understand that, it fits into Isaiah 33's prophecy about the destroyer who's never been destroyed. It says when, now that's an important word to pay attention to. It says when the destroyer stops, he will be destroyed. And then it says later in the same chapter, the brave men are crying aloud in the streets. The invoices of peace are weeping bitterly. The highways are deserted. There's no travelers coming and going on the roads. Highways are, that's EMP causes that. It disables all of our modern vehicles. It's lights out. There's other information. I've been talking about it for years, which we failed to recognize 
the words in this in this song stand by me starts out when the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light you see the land is dark the night has come the moon is the only light you says will you stand by me will you be afraid that song's describing EMP, grid down, extended. So is the song, Sound of Silence. It says, hello, darkness, my old friend. I come to speak with you again because, why? Well, because always answer your question, why? Because the vision planted in my brain still remains. Paul Simon talks about it. He talks about standing under the halo of a street lamp. That's at night. Street lamps are on at night. And he says his eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light that split the night. The Bible prophecy is talking about a sudden day of disaster coming and it's going to come like a thief in the night. Revel, uh, Jeremiah 6 talks about disasters coming from the north, that they're planning to attack at noon, but the daylight fades, the shadows grow long, so they change their plan to make it a night attack. All kinds of information is talking about this, as well as the song... A bad moon rising. I see troubles on the way. I hope you got your things together. Anyway, these songs are all prophetic. They were actually people wrote the songs, may not even have been aware that they were being directed and inspired by God, showing them what's coming. And we need to listen and we need to think about what will you do. The grid's down, what we have for water. Do you have a well, a pump, or the city you live in have water? You could get a 12-volt pump. I have it myself. I bought a cistern, a big black poly tank. I hook a 12-volt pump to it, hook it to the hose bib on your house. Shut off the water main on the street. Your water, your house can be run like an RV. You turn on the kitchen faucet and, it, and the water will go, <laughs> shut the faucet off. The pump will go, <laughs> pressure up. Your lines are under pressure. Your toilet will flush. Put on a pot of beans. Whatever you want. You don't have to be without water. But you're going to be without power. You may not have a generator, but it would be a good thing to have. But if you have a couple of deep cycle batteries, an inverter and some solar panels, anybody who understands this is what they got planned. I'm here to warn you, and it's coming. It could be happening in about five months because it says when the destroyer stops, he'll be destroyed. Well, it was about a year ago when President Trump announced, according to him, the war on terror is over, that ISIS has been beaten, that they've been beaten badly. They used to be dominant. They're not so dominant anymore. He says he wants to bring the troops home. Well, since the assassination of uh, Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian general, Iraq is, has made a decision for the United States to get their troops out. Go leave our country. We don't want you here no more. That's also part of stopping. But the stopping process, we this country is the destroyer. There's no other military power on the planet that even comes close to the track record of destruction that this country's caused. And so I began to understand, I even wrote a little booklet, I, I pass out thousands of these little booklets, but I'm hoping this YouTube video can reach more people. You need to, I need people to follow me. I have a lot of other information that actually uh, ties into all this stuff. And the more I, the more you listen to what I have to say, the more common sense it makes. Stock up on food, stock up on supplies, there's a war coming, and we are going to prevail. But in order to prevail, a military expert made a statement one evening. He said, in all the histories of wars that have ever come and gone, he said, every single time two opposing forces are engaged in a conflict, is that the side that always loses, they're the ones whose supplies are cut off. So I decided to myself, I don't like this idea of losing. I'm going to start collecting some supplies, and so should you. I can't solve this problem by myself, but I do know that freedom is not free. And there's nothing more precious in all the history of mankind. Freedom, more precious than life itself. For example, Mel Gibson in the movie Braveheart, they're about, he's, they're about to cut his head off. The last thing he screams out is, freedom, and they, boom, they cut his head off. But freedom is what he died for. We are the last of the free people. This global government is an attempt to enslave all of mankind. 
I'm going to cut this video short. I'm going to keep putting them on. i got to try to figure out how to put information together better than what I'm doing now, but this is as simple as it gets. So subscribe, click like, talk to you later.